A novel turned movie takes over the box office this weekend. Movie reviewer Matt Perrone takes us on a ride with a new psychological thriller that's rolling through theaters. Welcome to a post hurricane Monday. I've been on vacation the last two Mondays, which is the longest I've gone without seeing a movie in who knows when. But it's back to business as usual. It was a rather slow weekend at the box office, and as interested as I was in seeing Birth of a Nation, I had to go with the clear cut winner. Taglined as based on the thriller that shocked the world, the girl on the train roared into theaters this weekend. Was it as good as the book? Did it work as a standalone movie? Well, I'm here to give you my take and personal answers to these questions right now. Our movie begins with Rachel, played by Emily Blunt, who has fallen on hard times post-divorce. Dealing with an alcohol problem, she rides the train into New York every day. On the route, she passes her old home occupied by her ex-husband and his new wife and child. To distract herself, she becomes obsessed with the couple that live in the house two doors down. She sketches them and imagines their perfect life together. That is, until one day when she sees this woman on the deck with a man that isn't her husband. This stirs up a rage inside her as she remembers how it felt to have that done to her. She disembarks at her old stop and proceeds to drink herself into oblivion. Upon Upon awakening the next day, Rachel finds herself covered in blood and bruises. She completely blacked out the previous evening, but has an underlying sense of dread that something bad has happened. It soon comes to light that Megan Hipwell, the woman that Rachel has been watching obsessively from the train, has gone missing. Having caused a scene in the area that fateful evening brings the cops to Rachel asking questions that she has no answers to, which paints her in a suspicious light. As the movie progresses, Rachel finds herself drawn into the mystery from all sides. Even though she is trying to find out what happened, her actions continue to draw more suspicion towards herself along with circumstances that happen to fall into place. Before long, a web has been woven between the past and the present with numerous people snared in the mystery. All the while, Rachel can feel that there is a solution tugging at the back of her brain if only she could remember the night in question. As the pieces start to fall into place, we as the audience wait to see what the final outcome will be and if there is a monster lurking in the shadows. So, while on my vacation and driving to the Midwest, I actually listened to the book, so it was fresh on my mind when I was sitting in the theater. Looking back, I'm not not sure if I'm glad that I did the book first or not. While I was watching it, I definitely had the feeling that if I hadn't read the book, the movie would be hard to follow, which may be why people are giving it such bad reviews. At the same time, I kept wondering would it be more exciting if I didn't already know how it was going to end. Look, the movie has holes in it that are filled in by the book, but at the same time, when you watch the trailer for the film, there are scenes that aren't included in the actual movie that are important plot points in the book that were obviously cut for time, so that in and of itself is a factor. All in all, it's a pretty good adaptation and actually has some parts in it that are better than the book. As a standalone movie, it's a good thriller. But just realize if there are things that confuse you, they are explained in the book and possibly in the deleted scenes. Look, if you haven't read the book, it's a pretty good little thriller. But if you have read the book, then of course you gotta go see it so you can be the educated person in the room saying, oh, the book was so much better than the movie. This is why, and explaining the parts that your friends don't understand. Well, this has been your Monday Movie Musing. Back to you. All right. Well, welcome back, Matt. And maybe I will wait to read the book until after I see the movie. All right. Keep it here. We have one last look at your seven-day outlook next, live from Maine and Gervais.